course, most important event to celebrate is the 50th anniversary of the Communist Party in the Philippines. <laughs> it would be easy for you to listen and follow if you have read the long version of what I'm going to deliver to you. This is a compressed version of uh, the uh, great achievements of my article the great achievements of the Communist Party of the Philippines in waging revolution uh, in the last uh, 50 years. Dear comrades and friends, thank you for inviting me to speak at this cultural celebration of 50 years of the Filipino people's struggle for national and social liberation under the leadership of the Communist Party of the Philippines. All of us appreciate the cultural and artistic performances and exhibits that constitute the celebration. We are thankful to the NDFP and the Alinangan Art and Culture Network as organizers and to the Basi Squara Toile Hunts or BAC as host organization and to all the directors, performers, and other contributors to the cultural celebration. It is my task this afternoon to cite and commend the great achievements of the Communist Party of the Philippines and the Filipino working class and people to carry out the new democratic revolution against U.S. imperialism, domestic feudalism, and bureaucrat capitalism. The CPP upheld and applied the theory and practice of Marxism, Leninism, Maoism, it was able to analyze the social history, revolutionary experience, and current circumstances of the Filipino people. And it was able to carry out the first great rectification movement, formulate the party constitution and program for the people's democratic revolution. The new democratic revolution is a continuation of the unfinished revolution started by the Katipunan in 1896. The old democratic revolution, which was bourgeois liberal in motivation, succeeded against Spanish colonialism in 1898, but was soon thwarted by the U.S. war of aggression since 1899. The CPP has assumed the responsibility of developing itself as the advanced detachment of the working class and providing ideological, political, and organizational leadership to the proletariat and the people in their struggle in a semi-colonial and semi-feudal setting to complete the democratic revolution and proceed to the socialist revolution. Since the beginning, the party has been determined to wield the weapons of revolutionary armed struggle to seize political power by encircling the cities from the countryside and to arouse, organize, and mobilize the people in their millions through various forms of alliances under the general policy of the United Front. When we founded the CPP on December 26, 1968, the 75th birth anniversary of the great Mao Zedong, uh, we who constituted the Central Committee were only 12 individuals representing some 80 full and candidate members of the party. We had been leading mass formations since 1959 and built trade unions and various other types of mass organizations as members ran into thousands. To be exact, we were able to organize uh, some 25,000 people, uh, and then this would join up with 80,000 peasants uh, when we formed the New People's Army. Now the CPP membership is in the tens of thousands. It is the largest and most powerful revolutionary proletarian party that has ever arisen in Philippine history. Its organized mass base of workers, peasants, national minorities, women, youth, professionals, and other sectors run into millions. These are nationwide in scale and are in nearly all the provinces of the Philippines. The CPP founded the New People's Army on March 29, 1969. It started 
with only nine automatic rifles and 26 other inferior firearms for the initial 60 Red Fighters in the second district of Tarlac province. Now the Red Fighters run into thousands and their units operate nationwide in 110 guerrilla fronts in 73 out of 81 provinces. The full-time Red Fighters are augmented by tens of thousands of members of the People's Militia and hundreds of thousands of members of the self-defense units of the mass organizations. These are active auxiliaries as well as reserve force for the NPA. The NPA has surpassed the number, strength, and scale of all previous revolutionary armies in Philippine history. Most importantly, it has grown in strength and advanced since 1969 by carrying out the strategic line of protracted people's war, using the countryside to accumulate strength and create the conditions for the strategic offensive to seize the cities. At the moment, the NPA is striving to advance from the middle phase to the advanced phase of the strategic defensive in order to enter the stage of the strategic stalemate. It has a sound basis for the rapid advance of the revolution because of the temporary <coughs> and uh, accumulated experience of the revolutionary forces and the desire of the people for revolutionary change because of the worsening crisis of the ruling system and the escalating oppression and exploitation. The wide reliable rural mass base of the CPP and NPA is constituted mainly by the peasant masses who participate and benefit from the various stages of the agrarian revolution. It is a solid foundation of the local party branches and the local organs of political power. In carrying out the agrarian revolution and stages, the CPP relies mainly on the poor peasants and the farm workers, wins over the middle peasants to neutralize the rich peasants, takes advantage of the contradictions of the landlords in order to isolate and destroy the power of the despotic landlords. As a result of the advances in armed struggle and mass work, the CPP has been able to establish and develop the people's democratic government in the countryside. At first, the organs of political power are constituted by appointed cadres of the party and the representatives of the masses and subsequently by those elected by the mass organizations or the masses in the guerrilla bases. The People's Democratic Government is in charge of local administration, mass organizing, public education, socioeconomic programs, cultural activities, self-defense, settlement of disputes, the People's Court, environmental protection, and uh, social work to cope with enemy caused and natural disasters. The enemy is whistling in the dark when it claims to monopolize political power in the Philippines. There are now two governments fighting each other. Uh, this is what uh, uh, Lenin called having dual power in uh, one country. One government is the revolutionary one of the workers and peasants, and the other is that of the big compradors, landlords, and corrupt bureaucrats who are servile to imperialist masters. This reactionary government is based in the cities. The CPP applies the policy and tactics of the National United Front. It relies mainly on the workers and peasants, wins over the petty and middle bourgeoisie, and takes advantage of the contradictions among the reactionary classes in order to isolate and destroy the most reactionary clique of the big compradors, landlords, and bureaucrat capitalists. The most consolidated organization of the United Front is the National Democratic Front, consisting of 18 allied organizations, including the CPP and NPA. The NDRP has been effective in promoting the revolutionary armed struggle and in conducting negotiations for a just peace. It has frustrated all attempts of the enemy 
to make the revolutionary forces and people to capitulate and has firmly upheld its revolutionary principle and applied its national democratic program. There is no necessity to negotiate with an enemy that is hell-bent on destroying the revolutionary movement of the people. Let it be inject uh, um, a brief comment. Uh, recently Duterte posted of being able to destroy uh, the movement uh, before the end of, uh, uh, nine, of 2018. That's only a few days before that. <laughs> well, he adjusted, no? Uh, his, his plan is to destroy the movement uh, uh, before the middle of uh, 2019. Ah, he will fail. Uh, he will... <laughs> He will fail because of the revolutionary forces and the people, as I have described. And um, an advantage of the CPP is that uh, it has always been clandestine. It is not exposed in bourgeois electoral politics. And uh, uh, it is deeply rooted among the, uh, uh, the broad masses of the people. The United Front policy and tactics have been effective in advancing the revolutionary armed struggle and the various forms of legal struggle. As a result, the broad united front has been successfully applied to weaken and overthrow the U.S. instigated Marcos Paz's dictatorship in 1986 and subsequently the corrupt Estrada regime in 2001. At the moment, a broad united front has arisen to fight and overthrow the traitorous, tyrannical, and corrupt U.S. Duterte regime in order to frustrate the scheme of establishing a full-blown Marcos-type fascist dictatorship under the pretext of charter chains for federalism. This regime is culpable for treason, mass murder, corruption, and other grievous crimes against the people. So Duterte uh, would be politically destroyed uh, uh, before he can uh, uh, make any significant uh, progress towards uh, destroying the revolutionary movement. Uh, whether he will be ousted soon by a combination of mass uprising and a uh, uh, division within the armed, uh, the reactionary armed forces, or uh, by uh, uh, unprecedented strong pressures from the countryside uh, by uh, the People's War, or whether he finishes his term up to uh, 2022, uh, the revolutionary movement will certainly outlast him. Since its founding, the CPP has exerted all efforts to reach the overseas Filipinos. The more, the more it has done so since the 1970s, when overseas contract workers increased from year to year. More than 10% of the Philippine population, equivalent to 25% of the labor force, has been compelled to seek jobs abroad. The CPP has built its branches among overseas Filipinos as well as mass organizations among migrant workers and other sectors in many countries. Filipinos uh, are now staying in uh, at least 120 countries. The CPP has established comradely relations with communist and workers' parties and movements abroad in the spirit of proletarian internationalism. It has promoted the relationship of uh, Filipino mass organizations with their counterparts abroad in the internationalist spirit of people's solidarity. The CPP has made significant contributions to the critique of imperialism and modern revisionism and reaction and to the upsurge of the revolutionary resistance of the proletariat and people. 
It is a veil of bilateral and multilateral relations and conferences in order to unite, cooperate, and coordinate with revolutionary forces abroad. And we are now in the process of preparing an international united front uh, suggested by ECOR and other, uh, other anti-imperialist uh, and uh, uh, democratic uh, organizations uh, aiming for socialism uh, as the ultimate goal. The CBP strives to do its best to achieve greater victories and aim uh, for total victory in order to contribute to the resurgence of the world proletarian revolution and the national liberation movements amidst the intensification of all basic contradictions in the world. Those between labor and capital, those among the imperialist powers, and those between the imperialist powers and the oppressed peoples and nations. We are proud that the CPP is now leading one of the foremost revolutionary movements in the world and is a torchbearer of the world proletarian revolution. We are confident that the proletariat and the people cannot accept the worsening crisis conditions of the world capitalist system and will break the chains in order to realize a fundamentally better and brighter world of freedom, democracy, and socialism. Long live the Communist Party of the Philippines. Advance the People's Democratic Revolution. Long live the Filipino people. Long live the international solidarity of the peoples of the world. Long live proletarian internationalism.